beginning the journey. Life is all about the journey, and mine has been one of adventure. It didn't start out in the best of circumstances. I didn't grow up with much. Poverty is what most folks would call it today. We just called it surviving. I remember my mother struggling to provide for me and my siblings, working three jobs to make sure that there was food on the table. I remember wanting to spend more time with her. However, my mother had her own demons to contend with. Aside from her multiple jobs, our extended family was not what you call a happy bunch. Dysfunction and toxic relationships abounded. My mother was no exception to the rule, and I watched as she went from one toxic man to the next, never finding what she was looking for. Even at a young age, I remember looking at the life I was dropped into and thinking, I want more for myself. It wasn't until many missed opportunities and bad decisions later that I finally found a path for myself that ensured a better future. I was in my mid-twenties when I began my hoodoo journey. It was after a particularly nasty breakup stemming from one of those toxic relationships, the kind that only lasts as long as they do because you're complementing shades of dysfunction. I remember sitting at my kitchen table one night in my shoebox apartment, thinking once again, I want more for myself. To better understand where I was, I decided to explore my family history. How did I come to be? It was suddenly a pressing question that I needed an answer to. I knew my mother hailed from Queens, but beyond that, I knew very little about my family, aside from the few who would come to cause chaos in our world when I was a child. What I discovered completely changed my direction in life, sending me on a path of victory and fulfillment. I had no idea what I was beginning that night I first started looking into my family. I had no idea it would bring me to hoodoo and the powerful effects I would see in my life as a result. With the spiritualist practices of hoodoo and the law of attraction, I began to see myself improve as a person. The desires that I manifested came to me, and I was on my way out of that shoebox apartment and onto better things. I began seeing opportunities everywhere, and I took them. I crawled from the bottom to the life that I had envisioned as a little girl, a better life. I want to take you on that same journey by sharing what I've learned throughout my hoodoo practice. These lessons that I share with you are invaluable. They will direct you down the path that you never dared walk before. I promise it isn't like what you see in the movies. Hoodoo magic is all about intention, proper preparation, and spirituality. Chapter 1 Getting started with hoodoo. Hoodoo is the result of generations upon generations of practitioners building on the foundation of those who came before. It is so rich and broad that it can be daunting for those who are looking to start practicing, especially those who weren't exposed to it growing up. However, hoodoo is a journey, not a destination. Throughout your life, as you practice, you'll learn and discover more about hoodoo as a magical practice a culture, a piece of black history, and a community. Starting hoodoo practice blind or without proper knowledge and respect of the practice can be dangerous. While in recent years, hoodoo has moved more into the mainstream as experienced practitioners work to preserve and celebrate this piece of black history. Hoodoo is still widely misunderstood. For one, hoodoo is already plagued with misinformation rooted in racism and ignorance. This lack of understanding can cause real harm to hoodoo practitioners and black culture as a whole. In addition to the social risks, hoodoo also utilizes very real spiritual elements. If you play with powers that you don't understand, you risk harming yourself and the people around you. However, this isn't a reason to fear hoodoo. With proper education and an open, curious mind, you can make your world a better place and take control of your life. In this chapter, you'll learn everything you need to know about what hoodoo is and how it's practiced, and how you can start practicing on your own. Consider this the first step on your journey. What is hoodoo? Hoodoo is a folk magic practice. Folk magic refers to a practice passed down from generation to generation, usually within a particular racial or ethnic group that uses physical properties to affect the spiritual world. 
Most folk magic practices exist to remedy everyday problems, such as relationship strife and sickness. Though the terms are often mixed up, hoodoo is distinct from voodoo. Voodoo is a West African religion with its own religious system, leaders, and pantheon. While hoodoo does share some similarities to the core beliefs and philosophies of voodoo due to its West African roots, hoodoo is not a religion. Hoodoo practitioners can ascribe to any religious beliefs. One of the most unique traits of hoodoo is that it draws influences from many other cultures, from West Africa to Christianity to Native American folk magic. This is because hoodoo developed along with Black culture. Hoodoo is a uniquely Western Black practice, as Black people were transported from West Africa to the Americas and fought for their survival, not only physically, but spiritually. We shaped and were shaped by the other cultures we encountered. An exploration of the roots of hoodoo is an exploration of Black history. African Roots Much of the African elements of hoodoo come from Central and West Africa, where many Black people were first kidnapped from their homeland and taken into cattle slavery. For example, the beliefs of the Yoruba people continue to be reflected in modern hoodoo practice. From them, we get the importance of crossroads. The Yoruba people give offerings to the trickster god, Isu Alegba, at the crossroads, as they believe that this is where he resides, and many hoodoo spells and rituals are supposed to be performed at crossroads. For the Igbo people, we get the practice of pouring libations over the graves of the dead, something that transcends hoodoo and encompasses black culture as a whole. From the Bantu Congo people, who made up an estimated 40% of all African enslaved people, we get the Congo Cosmogram. This symbol represents the rising and setting sun and the bounds between the physical and the spiritual world, a visual representation of the various cosmic energies at work. Those symbols have been found in many historical black churches and plantations across the South. Slavery and Christianity while there are West African spiritual practices that survived in a similar form, much of hoodoo is the result of the oppression of the black spirit. Slave owners and the dominant culture were invested in converting slaves to Christianity. The practice of native religions and even the speaking of native languages could risk serious punishment or even death. This pushed any spirit practice that didn't strictly conform to Christianity underground. Native spirituality was practiced in the woods, under the cover of the night, and never discussed in open spaces, lending an air of mystery that somewhat persists to this day. Another way that enslaved people managed to hold on to their native practices was by using Christianity to obscure them and combining the beliefs and practices of both. Many hoodoo practitioners are Christian, or at least utilize hoodoo's Christian roots in their practice. The Bible is considered an important spiritual object, working as a talisman of protection as well as a spell book. Specifically, the Psalms are often used in spells and rituals. The biblical figure of Moses, the man who freed the slaves from Egypt, is important throughout Black culture, but specifically in Hoodoo Christianity. Christian Hoodoo practitioners consider Moses as the best Hoodoo conjurer of all time, as he performed magic and miracles. Those who were brought to the areas where Catholicism was the dominant form of Christianity had a unique experience when trying to hold on to their native practices. While the enforcement of the religion was somewhat restricted, the existence of the saints offered a unique way to preserve their worship of the Loa. Voodoo deities were ascribed to specific saints so that the enslaved people could continue to worship them as they pleased. Hoodoo was birthed out of a need to protect and care for our community when no one else would. While hoodoo is a solitary practice, and practitioners rarely work with others, they do work for others, healing those in need, punishing those who harm us, and offering protection through trials and tribulations. Core Beliefs While hoodoo practitioners can ascribe to any religion, there are a few core beliefs that form the philosophical aspects of hoodoo. These beliefs drive every ritual and spell and should inform every step you take in your practice. 
Gods and Deities The beliefs of voodoo had the greatest impact on the evolution of modern hoodoo. Many people misunderstood voodoo as a polytheistic religion because of its many named deities. In reality, voodoo sees God in all things. Our Creator wants to be close to us, so he splits himself into several other beings to do so. These manifestations of God are called the Loa, and communicating with them is how we derive magical power. Ancestors Blood is the most powerful magical element. Our blood holds the story of who we are and where we came from as it connects us to our ancestors. It's incredibly difficult for many black people to trace their background. Detailed records were rarely kept for enslaved people, and many of them have been lost to time, and that lack of knowledge leaves us lost in our own lives. Hoodoo offers us a means of overcoming that barrier and finding ourselves. Our ancestors are active and present in our lives, and by connecting with them, we can tap into our true abilities. Our ancestors can offer us wisdom and guidance as they see things we do not. They can assist and reveal. However, to earn this goodwill and cooperation with them, they have to be treated with respect, and that way they are like deities in their own right. The importance of ancestors is a big part of why hoodoo is a closed practice, meaning that it can only be practiced by those who descended from African slaves. Hoodoo does share a lot in common with other folk magic practices, and those outside of the African diaspora can learn a lot about magic and black history through studying hoodoo. However, because hoodoo was born out of the unique experiences and suffering of black folks, it can only be passed down by them. Those who don't belong to this bloodline do not have access to the true spiritual power of hoodoo, although by exploring their own lineage, they can find a practice that is their true birthright. Intent Your goals and intentions are incredibly powerful in hoodoo. A spell that is created with the intent to only affect one person will only affect that person because of the power of your intent. Many spells call for you to express your intent. This can be through meditation, repeating a phrase or psalm, or writing it down. However, the spirits know your heart. If deep down your intent is different than what you claim, this can affect the outcome of your spell. It is important to understand what you want and have clear, confident, and honest goals. Vengeful Justice Spells must also abide by the intent of God. Anything done with magic reflects the will of God. We see this in curses. Hoodoo allows practitioners to harm those who deserve it as a form of retribution. The punishment has to fit the crime to count as justice. Spells that harm people regardless of their ethics are referred to as black magic. Black magic is dangerous and should be attempted by only the most experienced hoodoo practitioners. Divination Hoodoo practitioners can communicate with spiritual beings, such as deities and ancestors, to learn things they cannot perceive in the physical world. This gives us knowledge of how they can manipulate the powers that be to reach their desired goals. The Divine Providence Regardless of what religion you ascribe to, Hoodoo relies on the existence of a supreme creator or deity. This deity or deities have a vested interest in the lives and ongoing of human beings and are involved in every element of our lives. Principle of Signatures Our Creator made everything in existence with His own mark or signature. This signature identifies the purpose and uses of everything. This is particularly important in root work or using plants and herbs in hoodoo conjuring. Through your growth as a hoodoo practitioner, you'll learn how to identify that signature in the natural world around you. Afterlife Our souls persist after our physical bodies die and enter a spiritual realm. While this realm is distinct from the physical one, we can still interact and communicate with the souls of those who have passed on. Dispelling the Myths Hoodoo is a representative of the unbreakable spirit of black folks. 
and our ability to hold on to our culture and our power, regardless of our circumstances. This incredible power is a threat to a culture that seeks to hold us down and keep us from thriving and growing as a people. For this reason, our spiritual practices have been demonized throughout history. From official laws banning the practice of Native African religion to modern taboos, hoodoo has developed a bad reputation. Hoodoo and voodoo have become bad words, used to describe a vague boogeyman in the media. Many people know nothing about hoodoo except for what they see in the mainstream media depictions, and this drives the belief that hoodoo is dangerous, primitive, evil, or carnal. However, very little of what you see in the movies is true. Hoodoo practitioners come from all walks of life and are common people. They are churchgoers and community members who live and love the communities they serve. Hoodoo has long since been a form of healing and spiritual support in the Black community. Much of the pop culture aesthetic of hoodoo comes from certain practices in New Orleans, such as voodoo, woodoo, and voden, all unique religions with their own beliefs and rituals. While some of these include things like animal sacrifices and depictions of the dead, they aren't anything like the devil-worshipping aesthetic we see in most depictions of black folk magic and are distinct from hoodoo. There are many misunderstood hoodoo practices that we will shed light on throughout this book. One of the most common negative associations with hoodoo is that of graveyards. It is often depicted as a sinister satanic ritual, evoking images of grave robbing and dangerous nighttime rituals. In reality, hoodoo conjurers see graveyards as an incredibly powerful sight due to its connection to our ancestors. Certain spells might call for the dirt from a graveyard, or a hoodoo practitioner might seek wisdom by communicating with the spirits. However, there are niche and somewhat uncommon practices, usually only done by experienced practitioners and always conducted with deep respect for those who rest there. To put it simply, the overwhelming majority of depictions of hoodoo that don't come directly from active practitioners are mostly fabrications created to scare people away from embracing their cultural power and stigmatize those who do. The best way to combat the negative effects of these lies is to see the truth for yourself. Tools of Hoodoo Hoodoo doesn't require expensive tools or complicated kits. Hoodoo was birthed out of a people who had less than nothing. No matter your circumstances, you can become a conjurer in your own way. There are a few tools that you'll want to seek out for your practice. These are the building blocks of your personal practice. Though we will be giving some specific suggestions, the exact materials will vary for every spell. As we go into more detail about how to use these different tools, you might find yourself drawn one way or another. You may find yourself called to be a true root worker working mainly with nature, or you might resonate more with candle magic. Regardless, these tools are simply your instruments for accessing your own spiritual power. Altar. The most important part of any hoodoo practice is your altar. Your altar will be where you communicate with your deities and ancestors to access your power and wisdom. You might be tempted to skip the altar and go straight to the fun stuff but an altar is mandatory. Our deities and ancestors are our guides, and attempting to engage in magic without their help can be fruitless or even dangerous. While your prayers can be heard anywhere, communication through your altar is always strongest. An altar is incredibly personal and will reflect your unique beliefs, goals, and family. So remember to trust your intuition. Here is a guide to creating your own spiritual altar. Location Select a location for your altar that has low traffic. You'll ideally want to be alone and undisturbed at your altar. However, you don't want to put it in your bedroom. The traffic for different energies and spirits can disrupt your sleep and cause strange or distressing dreams.